Hey guys, so in this episode, I am going to share the three pillars that were essential in me actually really under, getting a deeper understanding of resilience and what I use and how they became the foundation of my comeback and then the clients that I work with. So we're going to talk about calming the nervous system and how that allows you to tune into your intuition, your knowing so that you can get clarity on what you truly desire. And then when you have that, how that clarity becomes the catalyst to actually manifest and actualize the things you're asking for. From there, it's so much easier to take inspired, aligned actions from a really relaxed, crystal clear place. It's like we get rid of the static that's all around us and can actually hear what is inside of us, that ancient internal wisdom that you have, and you get to tune the dial into what you know and what you would like as your life. So this is my, it gave a free masterclass called the Bounce Back Bay Blueprint. So this is the masterclass in audio form. Enjoy. Let me know if you have questions, if comments, if this is a contribution, DM me, find me on Instagram, Emily Evans Russell. I always really love to hear from you and hear your feedback and ideas about the topic. Enjoy. Welcome to the Shift Your Vibe to Thrive podcast. My name is Emily Evans Russell, and I'm a single mom, multiple six figure business owner, and master mindset and energy coach. I created this podcast with two main targets one, to give you practical tools so that no matter where you are in your life right now, you not only know that things can shift, but you know how to make them greater, and two, to change your frequency so that you become an energetic match for everything you desire. I'm talking your relationships, your finances, your success, all of it. Think of this podcast as your weekly energetic upgrade with a mix of subconscious mind hacks, ways to quantum leap, and consciousness shifts. A place where you learn to sculpt your reality and actually finally truly have the magical life you deserve and one that works for uniquely you. Are you ready to uplevel your reality? I think I hear yes, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Thank you so much for being here. And now let's go to the show. So welcome, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you for, I know how busy all of our days and evenings are for actually taking time to show up and be here live. I'm so excited. Everyone else is getting a replay. And I just want to say thank you to everyone watching the replay. And thank you to all of you guys for coming. Okay, I'm, I am so excited about this. If you came on early, we were playing some music from a playlist I made. So today's masterclass, right, is going to be, it's called the Bounce Back Babe Blueprint. And I'm going to keep this to an hour to honor all of our time. Although, yes, I'm going to keep it to an hour. I'll make it fit an hour. <laughs> and I created a playlist over the last couple of years of songs that like when I was going through the shit that really helped me like I want to put them on a dance and make like feel awesome. And the other day I put a post on Facebook and asked for hey does anyone else have songs you would add to this. So I there were so many good suggestions and I added in so it's like a five hour playlist or something now. If you're on Spotify, grab it. We made a short link, which is emilyevansrussell.com forward slash playlist. But it's a good one. No matter what kind of music you like, you're, <laughs> there's probably something in there. I was talking to a client the other day and she's leaving me a message and she's like, I'm, I'm sorry I'm a little out of breath, but I've been dancing to that playlist. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. So some of you guys know me. If you do not know me, I'm Emily. Thank you for being here. I am going to start with a little bit of like the inspiration behind this call and a little bit of my story that you may or may not know. But funny enough, on just this week, I think it was Sunday, I was in this very room. This is where I do my yoga when I don't go to the studio and I do it online instead. <laughs> and Sundays, I often just like to stay here and do it from the house. And I had, you know, those five second moments in your life where something becomes really clear or you take on a totally different perspective or a new way of thinking. And I had one of those moments, I had just finished the yoga class and there was just this incredible sense of really so much gratitude for everything that I've gone through 
in my whole life, like we've all been through stuff, right? But especially in the last couple of years. And I remembered in this very room about a year and a half ago, I was so <laughs> pissed off at the universe and frustrated and mad. And I literally, I told the universe to fuck off. You can do that and then say thank you later. <laughs> and so I was literally like, seriously, I know I can handle a lot, but I feel like this is a bit much, like this is a bit much right now. And it was so funny because then here I am, you know, about yeah, a year and a half later and having that sense of like, you know, when everything clicks, like I could see all of these breadcrumbs and things that I had found and people I had met and new tools and perspectives and everything. And it went like it all clicked into place. And it's been doing that, but it was just that, that like moment of going, and I just paused and I was like, looked up to the sky and I was like, thank you. I know how supported I am. I feel it. I, I get it. I, I know I'm provided for it. And thank you for letting me tell you fuck off and still being there. And it was so awesome. So in, and what led to that, like what started all of this was you might know, like years ago, I got divorced. That's been a while now. And after that, soon after found out my older daughter had type one diabetes. And at the time I'm like traveling every other week to another country and being like, how am I going to handle this? And had to learn, thank goodness for my science background that I understood a lot about diabetes, learn quickly, manage that, and then really put myself all in into my work, into my travel, into my kids, and was just full on going nonstop for like a lot of years and feeling really fulfilled and also really busy, but loving it. And as that went on, I realized, you know that term, I don't know if this is just English, when you have all of your eggs in one basket, but you guys get it. And so what happened was I had like my job, my boyfriend, my best friend, my friends, my travel, my community, all in one basket. And then like the basket dropped from the penthouse apartment, you know, like went, and I was like, okay. So I was like, okay. When my after divorce, my long-term relationship broke up, I was like, okay, not expecting it at all. And then being like, okay, how can I just keep going and see what's here? Right. But because all my eggs were in one basket and kind of like a big messy lasagna, it was interesting. <laughs> and then over that next year, realizing, wow, this is a job I've been really fulfilled by. And I'm, I'm really waking up cranky and frustrated and tired and my body keeps giving me these signals like I'm going to be crying all day and I don't know why or I'm going to be like if anyone can relate to that like your body gives you messages even if your head is not getting it so it seemed like kind of this torturous year of going I know there's something else next but I'm not sure what and that's when I told the universe to F off. And, you know, then I have my daughters going through preteen and teen years and all the stuff that brings and all of it. So, but what's amazing with that is I knew even like, I would just kept trusting there's, I, there's something bigger. And as we change in our lives, when you change, your energy changes, your vibration changes, new people come into your life, old people fall away and it's not wrong. Like, it's just what happens and it's really easy. It's uncomfortable and it requires having great support. I am so grateful for so many of the people in my life that were there for me. But what I really, there's like two stories we can take in life. There's, well, there's a lot, but <laughs> two categories, a lot of it fall into is like victim victimizer, which is all about someone having power over you and there's power under, you know, and making someone else greater and feeling like at the effect of that. And then there's hero or heroine and guide. And for me, one of the most fulfilling things is, and maybe a lot of you can relate to this, is like when you walk through your own stuff, whatever that is, and it just takes the courage to be scared, <laughs> or anxious or whatever, and do it anyway. And then after that, it's just the willingness to keep showing up. 
and see what's there and keep showing up. And once you walked through that, that's that's our hero heroine's journey. You know, it's like what we and hopefully we go through a lot of them in our lives, right? It's not fun at the crux of like, oh shit, but we come through it and then it's like, oh wow, okay, I there was a lot of growth in that. That's where the growth is, right? <laughs> not in the power over under, but in the okay, I'm going to walk through this and embody it. And then the gift of that is then getting to be the guide for others and what really fulfills me and lights me up and what I'm here for and why I wanted to have this master class. And at the end of the hour, I will like let you guys know about I'm doing a program like a three month program on being a bounce back babe or dude (laughs) didn't have the alliteration of BBB and how because what I desire for you is that you find that power that is always been within you that resiliency that courage it's there and man had i given mine away and forgotten it and it was like that cosmic secret that it's been inside of you all the time (laughs) is what i am so here for is to be there for you guys when either you're going through what like might seem like a setback or you have that sense of I know I'd like something different in my job, in my relationship, but like that fear of like, but I don't know if I can handle it. So I'm going to stay here for a while, you know, either way, that's what I want for you. And to make it easier and faster, because <laughs> in the last couple of years, I mean, I have done easily over 300 some hours of live trainings and different things. I've read a couple dozen books. I've been like, gosh, just downloading the amount of like podcasts and things. So, and one of the things I love to do is take all that in and extrapolate it and make it easy for other people. So you don't have to spend that time and read all those books and go to all those classes. So that's what I'm excited for. And also to be there, like I said, it's about you finding that whatever it is for you to get the clarity, to move forward. And we're going to talk about like the three things that I, when I looked back and I was like, okay, what really got me through this? So we're going to talk about kind of those three pillars. And then once I, like, I don't want to facilitate or coach anything until I know it from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes and I'm living it and I'm embodying it. And then like with my private clients over the last year, I've been like, okay, let's see if how this works with them so I can like experiment. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And with that, you know when the little bubbles that kids make when you used to like blow through the little plastic thing and they go in the air, right? And have you ever seen when you blow one and then it meets up with another and if they just like touch lightly, you know how they they don't break but they stick and then they kind of fly off together? So that's what I know I have benefited from and I would like for you is like not to, I don't wanna crash your bubble and for you to have like my worlds. <laughs> But for you to like, know this is me, this is what like really hear what is true for you. Cause I will tell you like, as we go through these kind of pillars, what I thought was my knowing and my awareness and intuition was really giving me the wrong signals. Like I was reading my yeses and nos is kind of opposite and things like that. So it's like to be that bubble where we get to connect and engage, but go higher together with you having your agency, your sovereignty. Cause that's for me is what is most important and what I'm here to empower and other people to have. Cool. Okay. If you see me looking down, I took notes because I wanted to, (laughs) there's so much I wanted to talk about. I wanted to make sure I fit it in an hour. Okay. So first, if you have access to like type in just as like a vibe check, how's everybody doing today? Like one word, an emoji, a thumbs up, energy, it could be, and just know that all of it's welcome. (laughs) This is a space where you can bring anything here. It could be like, I feel awesome or I'm exhausted or whatever it is, but just to kind of get a sense of where everybody's at before we kind of go in. Yeah, a little bit messy, feeling inspired, bubbles, mental messy. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Lost, right? lost, confused. So all of this, like all of it is welcome, you guys. Have you ever like been in a chat like this and someone goes, I'm awesome. And you're like, shit, I feel like I'm going to die. What's wrong with me? (laughs) 
all of it is welcome because the gift is we're all having our own experience. And one of the things that's amazing is we get to shift that when we're ready, when you're ready on your timeline and at your pace. Because intensity does not equal transformation. It is you choosing it in your timeline, at your pace, in the way your body and your awareness is giving you that information of, I'm ready for this now. It's like if I had a seven course meal that may be amazing, but you had just ate, that's not gonna be good for you at that moment, even if it's amazing. <laughs> like For you right then, a bite is probably what's exactly required. And only you know that. So one of the first things I wanna talk about, and this is the, the pillar that really changed the game for me, was looking at regulating my nervous system. So I'm gonna get like a little bit sciencey, but make it super easy. A lot of you will like, this will be familiar, but the target of having, and you'll hear like, like calming your nervous system or settling it or regulating because we can be up here with our nervous system or down here. And the target though, when we talk about like a regulated nervous system is that we respond to life and all of its lifiness, <laughs> whatever that is, in a really like we respond to it we're not reacting and we do it in a way that when we take actions and we make choices we feel good about them and they make us happy and fulfilled it feels like aligned when we talk about alignment when it just feels like yeah like i'm proud of how i showed up in that moment right and so that's the target of having that like a regulated nervous system it's so that you can handle things like a breakup like a divorce like income going away unexpectedly, a flux in income, a change in friendships, like a change in where you live. And yeah, it's a change, but that you have the sense of, okay, but I know I can handle this. And it's where you flip. So the nervous system, one part of the nervous system is called the autonomic, which is like the automatic nervous system. So it's going on unconsciously. We don't consciously control what's going on, thank goodness, like it's doing things like beating your heart and regulating your temperature and doing, it can multitask everything, right? But with that, there's sometimes glitches. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about like cleaning up the glitches that go on, but in that system that is going on, it's run by the subconscious, it's automatic. And it's that like ancient part of the brain that the main target is to keep you alive and safe, which is awesome, right? <laughs> That's what we want it to be doing. And so there's two sides of that. And one of them is called the parasympathetic nervous system. And I always remember that because it starts with a P and like peaceful. <laughs> it's the side that gets turned on when there's enough information there that says, we're safe, you can relax, like everything is good. And your nervous system is kind of like, you know, those security cameras that's constantly scanning everything in your world to let you know, are there threats there? Like, is there a lion on the horizon? Because all it, all your nervous, that part of your brain, it's ancient. It doesn't understand modern day society. <laughs> so anything that you perceive as a threat, and that's key, a perceived threat, like I just got dumped or I just lost a job it perceives it like a lion that's about to eat you, right? So what happens in that is the other side, not the parasympathetic, not the peaceful side, the like, I'm, everything is good. I'm scanning my horizon. Everything is good. I can, I can relax. I can rest. I can digest my food. I can turn on all my natural healing abilities, put energy there. All your cells do their thing, right? But in the sympathetic state, that's your fight or flight, like it's it's mobilization. I'm either going to run towards this and fight it or I'm going to run away. That makes more sense or immobilization. Like if you see an animal just like play dead, <laughs> that's like freeze mode, right? It happens automatically. You don't consciously think like, hmm, I wonder in this situation, is it going to be better to fight or run or to play dead? you have it going on in the background. And the glitch in the system is a lot of things in our present day we're perceiving. It's like the security camera that when there's a bunny in your backyard accidentally says, there's a person with a gun in your backyard. <laughs> You're like, that would maybe actually be a threat, 
but the bunny isn't. So part of it is like changing the lens on those because it's like a teeter totter. If one is on, the other is off. And if you see in animals, like when they have, I mean, even when I take my dog on a walk and he gets super excited and he like follows a bunny trail or like a squirrel up a tree. Have you ever seen a dog afterwards, how they, they do the shake off? It's their nervous system going, whew, that has a lot. And then they're like, Bleh. and now I'm back to chill, right? Or after animals fight in the wild, they'll like fight to the death or almost death. And if they're both are alive, they, they literally, they shake afterwards. So their nervous system goes back. In humans, we have this lovely conscious brain <laughs> that then, which is a gift, but then it starts thinking, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. Like that person shouldn't have done it to me. We can hold on to things like anger for years and turn it into energies like resentment <laughs> and guilt and shame that animals don't have. They're just like, that's done. What's next? And so the gift is learning, okay, where am I in with, with my nervous system, this beautiful gift of my mind that actually is trying to just keep me alive and safe? It means well all the time, but where are maybe the glitches or where is my lens like filtered by past things that have happened, past traumas? They could be big T traumas or like little ones when everyone decided to hate you in middle school or when this person told you that your body sucked or I mean all the stuff right that your brain has cataloged <laughs> and then trying to like make sense of the world now from that so with the nervous system when we can tell that we have a that sense of I've got this like life is getting lifey things are showing up but I can handle it it's that sense of we can we know that we can go back quickly to that parasympathetic peaceful state no matter what shows up and they call that like your window of tolerance in that world of nervous system and trauma stuff but basically what that means is you're a river and you're going on this beautiful this flow of life and when we bump up against the riverbank it's like something that triggers us or sets us off and the more we can widen the river <laughs> and widen that window of like tolerance, the more sense of resiliency there is. It's like, no matter what comes my way, I've got it because I know how to adjust back to where I'm, where I'm good, where I have access. And the reason why that's so awesome, when you are in that space, you have access to your intuition, your awareness, your creativity, your, inno your innovation, your way of looking at things differently. When we are in fight, flight, or freeze mode, when that other system is turned on, like scared of what something that just happened or is about to happen, because the unconscious doesn't get past, present, future. It just gets, this is happening now or about to happen. And when we're in that mode, literally blood leaves the brain to go to your arms and legs to either run or fight, you get stupider. <laughs> you get stupider and you lose access to all of those magic capacities that we have, right? And it doesn't do us any good to have like a shaking body and a clenched jaw, or like if we freeze mode, that sense of, I don't feel like I can do anything. I don't wanna get out of bed. So you can either be like hyper mobilized, and this is where I was at, <laughs> where, you're basically like on alert all the time. But the thing is, if you're in there for long enough time, like I was for years, you don't notice it. Because also what your unconscious is doing, it wants to lead you towards what's comfortable because comfortable is safe. So if something hasn't killed you, like literally hasn't killed you, but you keep moving towards it and you haven't died, the unconscious goes, must be safe, right? So, because if I run towards a lion <laughs> and like that doesn't happen, right? You run away. But if I move towards something on purpose, so if I move towards like constant action from like panic or, oh my God, if I don't keep up, I'm gonna fall behind. Or if I don't do this for my partner, if I don't do this for my job, you keep moving towards it. The unconscious reads it as, well, I wouldn't run towards a lion, so this must be safe. And if you don't literally die, <laughs> Like the body goes, that must be, it must be okay. And so the unconscious moves towards comfort and away from discomfort. So when 
you're in that either fight or flight or freeze mode for longer, it feels normal. And so what happens is you run through red flags <laughs> because they seem like green flags. Because it's like, no, no, this actually feels good. Like this, this level of like, uh, da, 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 or this level of like, I'm just kind of like really lethargic. That's like an overshoot of the freeze mode, right? So you can either be, they call it hypo-regulated, which is where you might feel a lack of energy all the time or depression or just like a lackluster like, eh. but it's it's going on in the background because it's perceived something as my best response here is just to not do anything, to not move. And that's hyper-regulated. And if you're hyper-regulated, where, where I tend to go, <laughs> is you're in mobilization mode. So that's like, I should move towards this or away from it. And in that, you like might notice yourself being easily irritated, not wanting to be around people or engage, like everything is just freaking annoying, <laughs> like snappy. Decisions are hard to make, like choices are hard to make. It's kind of like there's a lot of confusion, all of that. So if you can relate to any of those, <laughs> those are your body's signals that kind of let you know where you may be. And it's not a, it's like a one, it's not a one size fix all. Cause if you're really hyper-regulated, then when you do things to down-regulate your system, it feels awesome. So like a warm bath feels awesome for someone who's up here. For someone who's hypo-regulated and kind of like, I don't have any energy, like a cold plunge would feel really good and be good for the nervous system. That actually up-regulates you. Different sorts of breath work. I bet it's one of the many trainings I've been diving into in the last few years. And I've done breath work before when I was a yoga facilitator, but I always like, what are the like really effective, fast tools <laughs> that change things quickly and easily? And one of the quickest ways to get into the nervous system and turn on the peaceful, the parasympathetic side is with our breath. Like notice when you feel panicky or worried about something, where are you usually breathing? It's like up here and it's like really like shallow and short. And when you're relaxed, like when you get into bed or if you hear a dog does this too and they get into their favorite position and they're like, <laughs> like, they, like let that out. It's one of the quickest ways to actually tell your body, give it the information of it's okay to relax. It's okay to be here or it's okay to actually have some energy. You can actually hold more energy in your body. So it's really awesome to play with things like that. So because I wanna keep the call to an hour, I wanted to introduce that concept, but not in do, there's a, there's a ton of things you can do to upregulate and downregulate your nervous system. But let's just even, if you are in a place, let's just take a couple minutes to do, we're gonna do like 10 breaths. And here's the thing. So, you know, when I listed all those, like you might notice you've been up here, you might feel down here. This is what's awesome about this in 10 breaths and it could even be two breaths, but we're gonna do 10. You get to choose what works for you. So if you're like, okay, hey, I'm one that's pretty like irritated and everything's pissing me off, I'm up here. Then you might wanna do a, a more relaxed breathing. So we're gonna go in through the nose and out through the mouth. And it could look like, and I don't know if you can hear my breath, but we'll see if you can, cause I tried to turn off my Zoom filter so you can actually hear it but in through the nose and out through the mouth could look like this. And you could also add sound, like you guys are on mute. You could even turn off your camera if you want for the few breaths, but it could also be like. Right? If you're someone that's like, I actually feel like I'm more often in a state of not knowing how to move forward or feeling kind of lethargic, then it could feel good. You're going to be the one that knows to maybe go. But you get the hand on the on the dial and in even just 10 breaths, you get to play with I might start here. And it might be like even as even as subtle as <sighs> and 
And one of the other beautiful keys is making that exhale even a little bit longer is the first clue to that parasympathetic nervous system that it can relax. So if you like inhale for like a count of two and exhale for three or four, or just know it's a little bit longer and you can kind of exhale by make it longer, like you're blowing through a straw. So let's just like take a moment and I'll sort of do the breaths with you, but you get to be, your body knows and you know, and you get to play with, you get the dial to turn it up or turn it down or go like, I'm just going to kind of watch everyone else do this or just receive that energy. That's okay too. And if you're doing other things, you might not want to be like taking in a bunch of oxygen while you're driving because it can make you dizzy. <laughs> and it could also make your, like, you can sometimes get cramps in your fingers or toes or around your lips, like even in just a few breaths. It's pretty amazing what we can change in the moment. So if you're, again, if you want to have your camera on or off, do what works for you. If you want to make noise on the exhale, go for it. <laughs> and you don't have to follow my pace. Feel your, if you're sitting, feel your butt in the chair or the bed or the couch or whatever that is, or your feet on the floor or the floor of the car or wherever you're walking. And then in your own time, we'll do 10 breaths. So in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just noticing on your inhale, what feels good, what intensity, what pace. And maybe making a sound feels good on the exhale. And continuing that just from curiosity about your body, about your breath. And knowing that you always get to put your foot on the gas or the brake. And it's just an experiment. What do you and your body require today? What would be a contribution? Yep, awesome. And keep going until you've done what feels good or you've done 10 or you're like, okay, played with that. Awesome. And sometimes like with that, you know, it might, you might want to gently flutter your eyes or slowly come back to the room. And one of the things I love about that, one of the fastest ways to shift your energy is with your breath. You know, there's lots of other things you can do too, but that one's really easy because <laughs> you can do it anywhere. And if I'm having like a uh, moment, even just a couple breaths of like, ah, we'll make like, we'll change a lot. You shift your energy, you shift the vibration, you get to change the lens basically that you see the world through that your nervous system is seeing the world through and i love that so for a lot of us like if i go just to sit in a meditation for a few minutes my mind's really busy <laughs> and especially if you've been really like hyper like ah that can feel like torture sometimes the nice thing about breath work is it gives you something you're like with your body and in curiosity with your body and it's giving you something you're shifting the energy it's really cool because you can make it work for you like you are your own drug you're it like you are the magic how cool is that it's it's already there and then you get to go like oh what would feel good today i'm gonna like basically take this pill but it's just your body like you get to use it which is amazing and it's quick and it's easy which i'm a fan of <laughs> okay so with that, when we kind of look at, okay, maybe I've been like my nervous system and I've been like reading, scanning the world, like again, perceiving things as threats, like changes in job, income, community, like all that going on. Okay, so now I have the agency, the power to go like, I can actually adjust this and be in the moment to go, I've got this. I can bring myself back into a state where I have access to my creativity, my intuition, like more energy. So I can look at the same situation, 
but from a totally different lens. And so then the next kind of pillar is what I've been calling them that goes with that. And you'll notice they're all connected. Like I'm gonna talk about three of them, but like a tripod, if you have a tripod holding up a camera or something else, if you don't have one of the legs, it kind of like, it doesn't work. <laughs> and what's interesting that I noticed when I really explored this with myself and it was like, and, and I will tell you for me, cause I was so hyper-regulated and again, that felt comfortable, right? And your your our tendency unconsciously is to move towards what's comfortable, move away from pain. And so because that felt good, when I started to like actually slow down, which is different from being, I'm up here and now I need to sleep for three days. <laughs> or I'm up here and I need to have like four glasses of wine to feel all right. Or I'm up here and you know, that's different <laughs> than I'm, good. And that doesn't mean it's like you get access to enthusiasm and joy, but it's a very different flavor <laughs> than this. And so what I noticed is at first I was like, I feel really uncomfortably bored or I don't know what to do with myself. And it was just like experimenting enough to realize like, yeah, but you know what? I'm everything in my I like have my markers and I really asked for what do I value in my life? What's important for me? And this is going to be different for everyone. That's a really great question to ask of like, what actually do I value? And for me, it was like freedom, which means different things for different people, but freedom of expression, freedom of my time and space, my, my family, my girls, right? Having space and time to read, to be with my dog, to go out in nature and not feel like I have to bring my phone everywhere. So I started to notice as I was doing more practices and a lot of it was, it was like breath work, meditation, turning off my phone, not checking my phone in the morning. Like I used to wake up to like hundreds of messages. I'm like, okay, I'll feel really good if I clear a bunch of them in the morning, which would feel good, but it was wrecking. <laughs> My, my sense of peace. So when I started to really go, no, I'm just going to take my dog for a walk and sit for a few minutes, make a coffee, then, then get to the day, I started to notice, holy shit, I thought I was good before. I have a different flavor of peace. I have a different flavor of happiness. I have a different flavor of engagement with the world, with people, all of it. So know, to, know that wherever you've been at, it's going to feel a bit uncomfortable to change at first but just notice your life and the other things in it that you value and what changes. You know, I always like to look at it from experimentation, what's fun and all that. So with that, the next piece was, okay, you all, right? We're infinite beings with incredible awareness <laughs> of everything going on around us all the time, everyone, everything in the world, doesn't matter if they're physically around you or not. And, our own intuition and knowing about what is true for us, right? And one of the questions, I'm not kidding you, I asked every day, multiple times a day and still do, is what is true for me I have not yet discovered? And I let it go. <laughs> and the amount of new things and people and things that would come in, I'd be like, oh, okay. And without a judgment of this is good or this is bad or this isn't conscious enough or this might be, I just was like, if if this is interesting to me and I get a little whisper, I'm going to go towards it. So that was great. And what was interesting is once my nervous system was more resilient and regulated, I heard my yeses were very different. <laughs> and what was clear, because again, if you're, imagine if you're, whether you're really hyper or hyper regulated, it's like having, you know, the little red bars that show you like, and we're reaching danger if we're all filled up, <laughs> like all the way red. When you're like that, and, and your nervous system is like that, it's like having a brick wall around you. So it's really hard for the feather awareness to come in. It's also difficult for the things we're asking for and want to actualize in our lives to actually receive them or to, to receive them and actually enjoy having them and be able to have them. So with the intuition and your awareness and your knowing what I, so here's the, here are some of the things I wanted to just briefly talk about. How do we know what's actually our knowing and intuition versus 
what's actually coming from anxiety or like fear or attachment and desire, like I can't lose this, is intuition's going to be very calm, like a calm voice almost, versus a, and it doesn't, when I say voice, I don't mean you have to hear, actually hear a voice. If you've heard of the five clairs, when we talk about knowing, there's like clairvoyant, which a lot of people have heard about, right? People that can see things, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to be able to see ghosts or see like things like that. It's like visual, you get vis, you know, get visual symbols or signs or things like that. There's clairaudient where you might hear things, right? But that could also be, oh, you know, when I'm when I'm having a thing go on in my world, I turn on the radio or listen to a song on my playlist and it had the exact words that I needed to hear. That's like Claire audience too. Claire cognizance is like just the instant, like I just know something, I don't know why I know it. Claire sentient is when you feel things with your body and then Claire olfactory. And what's interesting is you're an infinite being, you have access to all of them, but some will be a bit more prevalent at first. And when you learn to go, oh, I tend to be like, this one is often how I get downloads or information is through my body or through what I maybe do here or through just like kind of receiving something, then you can like turn up that dial. And what's interesting is the other channels start becoming a lot clearer too. <laughs> And then with that, so if you'll have like with intuition, it will feel calm and relaxed and it's not incessant. Whereas if it's that like what we think might be a knowing or an intuition, if it's like very loud or repetitive or very linear, like it makes sense, right? That's often a sign of like, wait a second, maybe I need, we could ask another question here because that might not be coming from what's actually true for me <laughs> and what I know. And there's not usually a pattern with your knowing or intuition. It's like, oh, comes comes out of nowhere. Whereas something from anxiety or fear might be like, okay, every day I travel, I get really nervous. And, you know, I, I don't like I get nervous when I go on an airplane. Whereas if you're always good before you get on a plane, and then one day you're like, uh-oh, this, this feels off intuition, right? There wasn't a pattern to that. It like came out of nowhere. The other one is more like fear-based. So it's like kind of, we start to read that. And when you can look at all of those, how you personally receive information, when your nervous system is like calm, then we can hear that voice louder. That's ours. And it's not so confused with everybody else's because it's really easy because we're so aware <laughs> to hear everybody else's and also go, well, that sounds really good. That maybe would be something I'd like to have in my life or that makes sense. If it makes sense, that's not your, like the thing is we can logic our way into or out of anything because you're intelligent. <laughs> and that is not how we tap into what we know. So you all are probably familiar with the power of asking questions. And there's those questions that we add, like the big open-ended questions, right? That we can ask the universe. So when something shows up and the shit hits the fan and like, we're like, okay. And our, our body's like, uh oh, like alert. Like, <laughs> we're like, okay, let's get my like self back to a space where I can flip that switch on of like, I'm actually okay to relax. Let me look at this from a more expanded space. Then we can ask questions like, what else is possible here I've never considered? If I did know, what what do I know about this? Like, how can I innovate? Like, what else can I be or do here, right? We can start, those are open-ended. And then what I love when we're playing with like our actual knowing is asking yes, no questions, but doing it in different ways so that you get like double, triple confirmations, how we learn to, to trust our own voice and trust our, and some of us are very much gut yes, no people, some people are not. And that is our unique difference. If you look to someone, you're like, how do they freaking know how to do yes, no, like instant? It's because they're wired that way. Other people aren't. Other people, like, they, they require a little bit of, like, to ride this wave of, like, I'm here, 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 and now I'm clear, and now I can choose, right? 
So also knowing like, what is my pattern? But when we ask a question like, okay, say there's two lines um, at the grocery store or that like two routes you could take to get somewhere and asking things like, will this be faster? You get a yes. Okay, will the other way be slower? Like, so ask, it's the same question, but notice how you're gonna get different responses or is this more favorable to take this way? What we tend to do, which doesn't work with the universe is, or I've done this at least is, oh my God, should I leave this job? Should I, should I, should I? Should, <laughs> should doesn't work for questions. The universe or source or God, whatever you wanna call that, it's not there to give you advice, you know, but it is there as a resource to tap into and get feedback from about what you actually know within you. So would this be more favorable? Would this not be? Would this be like a better day to leave for the trip? Would this one not be? What about like, will I have more ease on this day? Okay, is this day hard? Like like playing with it. So you start to really go, shit, I do know this. Like I've asked a few questions that all got the same response. If it's not clear, wait, step back, you know? But how those fit together was a dynamic shift for me because I realized what felt comfortable were often these like red flags and things that kept me moving farther off away from what was actually true for me and boy did my body let me know <laughs> like through some days like just being like i can't like i feel like i can't move or i'm crying and i don't know why or i'm around this person and i'm shaking and logically i could explain that some other way but your body is like always telling you so with those then the last kind of part of that tripod is okay I like you have the agency, you can kind of go, okay, I got my nervous system in a good spot. My lens is clear. <laughs> and now I'm really having fun turning up and trusting my intuition in a whole new way and being curious of how I get to play with that in a new way. Then when we go to actualize and ask for things we desire in our lives, one, we're way clearer about what we do desire because when all that other stuff is going on, we may be asking for things and pulling them in that we don't really want. And you're, you're powerful. <laughs> so, so you're going to like, that stuff's going to come. So there's that. And then there's also when the nervous system is like on full alert, like the all red, that wall of bricks also keeps things from coming in. Like we can get some things in through maybe like a crack, but there's like this universe of other stuff waiting for you that when we're clear and it's our knowing and no one else's and our body and our being and our wisdom from within gets to really shine because that other system, remember, that's working for you is turned off. Like you don't have to be, you're not going to die. It's okay. And we don't read things that way anymore. Then some of you might have heard me talk about like energy shopping which is a way of like going out through the world and going "Ooh, i'll have that and i'll have it my way however that shows up so here's something i learned about why that works so well which is interesting <laughs> so i was in one of the many courses i've been doing over the last time i was learning a lot about the subconscious right and how it works and it's some things i had heard and i got but I was listening one time, I'm like, oh my God, that's why energy shopping works in a really cool way. So when I talk about like you're in your life, right? And I'll often like see a scene in a movie or I'll be present in a moment with a friend and there's this like beautiful energy, right? And I'm like, oh my God, that, that energy, I'll have that, whatever it looks like, whatever it is for me. And it's like a way of create, like letting the universe know, because the universe speaks energy. You were aware of an energy of like, oh, that's cool. I would like that. But what's awesome is your subconscious works in visuals and senses. So it works in sight, sound, touch, smell, right? So when you take a, like a snapshot of a moment, your unconscious now knows the target because you as the being get the energy. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm having that, right? However it looks. But what's cool is you now get to use that 95% in the background that's working for you all the time in the right direction because it go the unconscious doesn't understand and then it can extrapolate so like one time you learned when you were little you learned to tie a shoe right you didn't have to learn to tie every shoe 
the unconscious goes, I got this. You like, this is how we do this. Now I can tie every shoe out there and you didn't have to think about it. It's the same when we energy shop, when you're like, mm, that energy. And then the unconscious can actually go, oh, you mean like when like you were rolling around in the grass or up against that tree and just had this like moment, but your unconscious sees it. It sees the tree, it sees, it feel, it smells what was in the air. It feels like your hand on the, on the bark. Now it knows where you're going. So now you get like all of that bonus in the background going, that direction and then it extrapolates along the way because it's not like it limits you it's just giving you extra because if the unconscious doesn't know where it's going and we're like i want more happiness that's awesome but what is that for you and trust me the unconscious does not understand money abundance happiness it doesn't get it so it's like you get the energy but then when you're like oh but that little that little scene that sound that smell like that's it for me you know like oh that feeling of putting on a cashmere robe naked and laying in front of a fire like oh that's abundance for me okay cool now now it knows where you're asking to go <laughs> and then it can be like whatever this looks like however it shows up and that's the beauty of knowing when you're clear on what you value in your life like this freedom and this and this and this then you can you get to lay back and go whatever that looks like universe you handle the how, I know that's not my job, and I'm gonna surrender and let it come to me and enjoy the freaking journey of how it shows up. And it may take a while. Like I said, I, did, I would have preferred my timeline to not be so long, in the, which is why you know I was having a moment with the universe, being like, seriously, this is a little bit harder and longer than I would like, but what's amazing is it will show up. And when you have those pieces in place of like, like a resilient regulated nervous system for you and you get to have the dial set and know how to turn it and then your intuition is crystal clear in a different frequency and tone than it's ever been because the noise is drowned out and then you have a way of like when that's clear when you ask for stuff and it's for you and it's based on what's true for you and there's not that brick wall around it can come in with so much ease so that is what I'm asking for for you and I'm here for. And I wanted to give this like little master class and I'm doing good on time, this is awesome. <laughs> so what I wanted to then now invite you guys to, and this will be for some people and not others, I might be your cup of tea, I might not be. I wanted to elaborate this into a program where I can actually work with people and be the bubble where we get to go, hello, and go to new places where I can we can dive in more to a lot of the stuff that I've been exploring and learning so that I can make it easy for you about the nervous system and the subconscious. So we can like, so you have that, like the, the dial, then you're able to do that. And I would love if the timing is right for you, this is like, I will be, it's just the founding round. And it's a mix of, I looked at what, support did I require over the last year? And I required people, I required support from people. <laughs> so there's going to be a live call once a month, and then also a small group call with no more than four people in me so that I get to really like work one on one with everybody a bit. And not just a thread where we give announcements, but <laughs> a community area and chat where it's like, you get to feel what it's like to reach out and require support and have someone meet you and how simple that is, even if it's for a couple minutes. So the first month, and you know me, I'm not super linear, but, but <laughs> roughly it's gonna be the nervous system, a lot of that stuff and how we can start responding and not reacting and really go like, I can handle this and more. And then a lot of, exploration on the intuition stuff and knowing what is true for you, which a lot of you know, but again, like clearing out the static and the programming, because holy shit, do we get programming from everywhere? <laughs> so in the content we consume, in the people we're around, in, again, if we like put someone in power over us, like all of it, so like clearing that out so that you can hear your own voice, and then all of the, like, like now we are in that mode of, I get to use energy so I can transmute the situations. I can bring in what I'm asking for and anything else that shows up. And a lot of the, so we're gonna have those calls. We're gonna have monthly, 
I've also learned to do like audios with the subconscious where we can kind of like clear things like I'm not good enough. I don't think I have what it takes to get through this, like clearing resentment or guilt or things that have been there where you get to just listen and I do the work for you. <laughs> and then we get to interact. And if this is something that you're like, now is the time for me. I'm going to be taking 20 people in the first round because I want to keep it intimate and I want to use everybody that's there to hear what is going on in your world. And I'm going to be responding and making the content like I have some of it done, but I'll be making a lot of the content in real time with you guys so that you're like, hey, this is what's going on for me. Or I have this question. If you have the question, it trust me, it is up for someone else so that I can be creating that in the moment with you guys. Cool. So. I like to gift things. If you want to be one of the bounce back babes, I even have, we made a mug that I will send to you no matter where you are in the world <laughs> as a bonus. If you pay in full, there's also payment plans, but there's already some of these audios that you're going to get immediately. And an energy shopping audio program I did recently. And then some other like tapping into your future self and like bringing stuff here now, getting the voice out of your head that's always like, you can't like the doubt that all the crap and also like being able I was having a really hard time sleeping so I had to make this audio for myself <laughs> to really like have your own space when you're sleeping and all of those connections or places that are draining like kind of closing off energetic drains so that you can add to your energy when I do it again so you get lifetime access to it but I will keep updating and adding to this program because you know me and I'm always like learning new stuff and going oh my god then there's this and then I add it to it so you get all future all future versions of the program in the future as well check out the program if you're interested it's emilyevansrussell.com forward slash babes <laughs> but in this last year too I have no surprise had people come to work with me who had just gone through a breakup, who had gotten divorced, who were wanting to leave their longtime job and start something new. And in working with them, I got such good feedback because I really asked the universe, hey, like, show me, have I been through this enough and embodied it enough? And it was like, yes. And like, I kept adding and adding and working with people. And I would be honored if it is the time is right for you. <laughs> and either you've gone through something or you'd like to make a choice that you're a little bit like, Eek, terrified to make, then I'd love you to, to be with me. And if it's not the time, I totally get that too. But if there is some place where you, I know I had to invest in myself and choose me in ways over the last two years that I hadn't done before. <laughs> I can very easily invest in my energy in someone else's life, in their mission, in their cause, in my kids, in their activity they want to do. And it was time for me to go, you know what, like what now if I actually put these resources in different areas where I haven't before for me and what showed up was really freaking phenomenal. And I am honored to get to be here with you today. So the doors to this will be open until Tuesday, September 3rd for 20 people. And if I don't see you there, I will see you on my podcast season two just launched. <laughs> and lots of other things I've been creating and, and have on the schedule to create. If you want to come to Costa Rica with me, I have a retreat coming up there in November with two of my lovely friends. We have a few spots left for that. Choose your own adventure. I really want to say thank you guys for taking the time and for being here. I see some really wonderful, familiar faces and new people. And just thank you. Thank you so much. And if there's any questions you have, or anything, reach out to me. I, I really love voice messaging and Instagram or Facebook. I will respond to you or my emails. I really do. It's me. <laughs> that response back. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Have the most beautiful day or evening. And I hope to see you soon online, in person, on the podcast. Mwah. Bye, you guys. I hope you got something out of that episode. If you like this podcast, please share it with someone you know who'd find it useful or interesting and subscribe so that you can listen to past and upcoming shows. 